What's the plan? Yes. GSL. In the service of Iron. Hey guys, welcome back to the Code A Round 3. This is Day 2. I am Wolf. With me is Calder. we got four Code S spots to give away today. It's going to be exciting. Yes, once again, it is the last round of Code A. Yesterday, we already saw four players that advanced to Code S. Today, the same will happen. And we have a pretty sick lineup. The game that we saw yesterday, especially between uh, the two Startail players, was really exciting. But we had a really lot of close matches, and I don't think that today will be an exception. Yeah, I don't think so either. We've got Dong Rigu coming up. Uh, yesterday, he was able to take his OSL win yep. and get his way into the finals. So he's been practicing for a completely different matchup and playing against MC, in fact. Took that series pretty dominantly, but now he's got to play a completely different matchup, one that he struggled in before. He hasn't actually played too many ZVZs in his history, in fact. Yeah, exactly. The thing is, uh, DRG was really a ZVZ master, so he was known for his excellent mirror of play, but in the last few weeks and months, he was a little bit, well, shaky in comparison. Still yeah. on a pretty high standard, but he didn't play this many ZVZs if you compare it to his past. On the other hand, we have his opponent, Roro who uh, does, didn't play so many ZVZs in uh, televised matches in Circle of Two just yet. But we have uh, a few more games and we are starting things off without a Zerg player today, actually. Our first match will feature Terran versus Protoss. We have an EG Protoss in uh, the studio today and also a Prime player. Yeah, we've got a oh, sick lineup of players today. Maru, I'm yeah. really looking forward to seeing how he's going to do today. You know, he's been in Kodas before. He's one of the youngest Kodas players to ever exist. Now he may be able to get back in. Now check out the info down here about the Kodas Finals. It's going to be on October 20th. There's an uh, announcement of where the finals are exactly. You can look up the directions on the Golem forum. Check that out. Make sure that if you're in Seoul, you don't miss it. It's at a great venue. Really like it. You'll have a lot of fun if you go down there for sure. Yeah, it will definitely be great. I'm going to be there. Wolf as well. We're going to watch the finals. It's going to be just epic, especially with those two players that will face each other. In the Codex finals, it's going to be Marine King. No, not Marine King MVP. The other guy with the M. <laughs> uh, and against uh, life. Yeah, Marine King won it uh, to participate in the finals. He was killed. Close, but in the end, it's once again MVP who was able to participate or to get the final slot. So, well, today we had own Taf Kodes, we have Kodes, and let's have a quick look at the matches. Yep, yesterday's results, of course, are Vampire took out Hyun 2 1. Hyun going for a really interesting mutilist strategy on game three, barely did not pan out for him. Squirtle holding two crazy all ins from Hack in oh, yeah. our second best of three. And then Byung was able to take a pretty nail-biting series over Heart. That one was a tough one for him, but he is the first Kessel player to go all the way from Code B up to Code S. And then last but not least, Creator was able to take out Alive 2-0, looking pretty dominant. Today's matches, here they are. Maru against JYP. We have Mini, who was able to defeat Naniwa against Curious. The Terminator against Polt. Terminator taking out in the last round, actually, another TSL player. He took out Shine. Hold one's revenge for his teammate. And in the last game, as mentioned earlier, we have a Zerg versus Zerg with Roro up against DRG. And we've got two Castle players, Mini and Roro, that could potentially come all the way from Code B up into Code S. Obviously, Roro was seeded. He did not have to play his Code B matches, but. Either way, here's our first match. Maru versus JYP. Both these guys have been around a while. They've both been in Kodas before. This is going to be exciting, man. Yeah, the Marine Prince against the Protoss Panda. Both of them. And of course, JYP, a really tough opponent for Maru here. But the Terran player from the Prime team is very, very strong these days. He's just one of those players that you should never underestimate. And in the recent history, he had a couple of Protoss players that he had to face. He was able to win against Tasta. But against any other Protoss player, he was not able to succeed. So let's see how JYP is going to do today against him. It's going to be an interesting match. This is one of the closer matches that we have today, I feel. And, uh, you know, in the chat right now, they're actually talking about strategies, joking with each other about what strategy is going to be used. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I only saw it for a glimpse. I think JYP said, I don't think there's any way you're going to make a third command star against me in this series. And Maru just answers, yeah, I'm going to go for an 11-11. That was actually really cool. Yeah. I want to see that. I really want to see it. After yesterday's games between Squirtle and Hack, I want to see it again. And Cloud Kingdom was one of the maps. Will Maru go for it? We'll find out right now. This is the GSL Code A, ladies and gentlemen. And we have our first best of three at hand. This is Terran versus Protoss with Maru Prime up against EG JYP. We are heading into the match right now. Games, of course, are brought to you today by Color and Wolf. Hurry up, Korean commentators. I'm out of ideas. What to say? Go! The map is loading. It's 80% done. 
It is, of course, Cloud Kingdom, a tough map for Terrans in the late game. Will Maru actually put on that early pressure? They don't stop, right? No, they man. just keep going. They keep going, dude. They, they want to embarrass us. Like they are feeling. just, they had too much hot six. Yeah, I guess I'm, so. I'm going to have some in a little bit here. This is the GSL Code A round three with Calder and Wolf. Starting to the bottom left of the map, we have the Marine Prince. It's the disciple of Marine King. He's starting for the Prime Team, the Terran player in red who calls himself. Maru Prime. Maru Prime, one of the youngest players that we have in the GSL. This guy is a killer. He was already in Codes, made a brief appearance. He's up against a very strong opponent today. He's up against uh, Evil Genius. He's up against the Protoss player, known as EGTYP Ladycore. Now, uh, you will notice as well, the game directing today is being done by Heaven. Um, that's why you see this, this fancy animation that probably will make you sick if you're not used to it. You know, I want to have a Street Fighter voice button right in front of me on the desk. <laughs> so I can hit it every time, just time it out. Yeah. The production team's always trying to work with you on that. And, yeah, and right next to it, I won't have the GG button. <laughs> I don't know, man. That GG button. I think you and I actually, our voice could make the new GG button 2.0. No, no, we would, of course, record it first. Yes. I mean, our GG is brilliant. I'm sorry, Greek commentators, but you guys just can't they don't handle even, that. They don't even time it as well as we do most yeah. of the time. Our GGs are spot on. I'm sorry, guys. No disrespect or anything like you, but I think it's time for a change. Yeah. They gotta, they gotta study our GT timing. Well, let's see what JYP wants to do when he sees this gas, because they were joking around in chat. This map is a map that a lot of Prosses have been dominating in the late game. Once you get that fourth base up, it's really hard for the Terran to attack down that ramp into Storms and Colossi. And Maru is starting things off, off aggressively with gas, and JYP was accusing him, saying, you know, I think you're gonna do a 1-1-1 or an 11-11. I don't think you're gonna play a straight up game against me in the chat, and we may see something just like that. It's just like Maru really likes to be aggressive. Of course, he's shown that he also is able to play the macro game, the longer game, that he is really good in the late game, but still, he's an aggressive player. He wants to put on pressure, so that's what JYP is expecting here. And the Protoss for Evil Genius, he had a really interesting history recently in this matchup. In the first round of his Code S group, he was actually doing really well against Supernova. He played twice and he didn't lose a single map against the strong Terran player. A Manor Depot, I have never seen anything like this. I have seen this he ages ago. He traps two probes. That's actually so annoying. That's really annoying. I mean, the SCV gets killed, but yeah, you're right. So that's very, very annoying. It's been ages since I've seen it, and it's, usually you see it with a pylon. Yeah, it takes so much skill to actually execute that properly. That was really cool to see. By the way, uh, he pulled out a gas after mining 52, he started his reactor, and has since just made a command center his main base. So this is a tricky way to play, where you get a lot of extra marine production out. People called this build the, the reactor marine expand a long time ago when it was popular. It's not as popular these days, but it really throws cross players off because they don't know, you know, are you expanding, are you being aggressive, you hide the commands on the high ground. JYP is dropping his own Nexus though, so he is doing exactly what you would suspect at this point in time. I mentioned that he was successful against Supernova, but then he had to play against MVP and against Marine King and Codes, and against both of them. He lost, he was able to win the map against MVP, but still, in the end, the last two matches that he played against Terran were pretty disappointing for him. He wanted to advance, but he didn't. Now he has to face another Terran player, and I'm pretty sure that Marine King will definitely have talked a lot to uh, tomorrow about JYP style, about what he could do here in these games. So let's find out who's going to succeed. As already mentioned before, Mauro is going for this expansion, but he is not only going for one command center, he's going for two. Yeah, he's gotten the second one up. He has resumed mining gas from one refinery now, hasn't started the second one. And JYP is just getting his, his third gas up now. He's only going up the three gateways. He's got a lot of pylon potential on the map. He's got one on the north, one to the south. This is just going to be for spotting units and for attacks later. He's not going to be putting on early, early pressure with his gateways. 
And Maru's done a great job of hiding what he's doing. Even pulled most of his units out of the bunker when the Stalker poked up, so he doesn't know how many Marines are on the map, what he's really dealing with here. JYP sees that there is no expansion on the high ground, so he might actually assume that there is some kind of one base play coming his way. This is what he what he suspected that would happen in this game. This is what he mentioned in the chat. Maru, on the other hand, is now sneaking in with the Marines, and that's a lot of pressure. Oh, and JYP did not pull his Zealot back. He is in a little bit of trouble. Uh, as far as defense goes here, it's not Mike for his stock as well, but since there's no probes on the low ground, he should be fine. He loses just one, and the Stalker should survive. He's got other units to the left side of his base that he can use here as well. Mara is going to try to kill a few probes here, I'm pretty sure of it. And there he already starts. One, two, takes down a third, and maybe even a fourth. Does he get the sentry? That would be huge! No. Sentry doesn't die. In total, he killed five harvesters. And now he has the command center on the low ground. But remember, he has two of them, so he will have three orbitals. Yeah, he's also got triple SV production now. So their worker count is even now at 28, and he'll be able to catch up, uh, even with Chrono Boost used by JYP. JYP actually has built up quite a bit of Chrono. He's not really 100% decisive on what he wants to use it for. He can Chrono Boost on the Observer, but he's got about three available right now. He's not Chrono Boosting his probes. Uh, meanwhile, back at home, Maru is actually getting his stim out at a pretty normal timing for this triple barracks. He's also going double bunker, which is pretty standard when you know that your opponent is starting to figure out what you're doing because you don't want to be that vulnerable Terran who dies to the six gateway push or dies to that two immortal aggression. You and Maru either. has a little bit of a history of falling into traps on this map in particular. I still remember a game that we've seen him play against Protoss on exactly this map on Cloud Kingdom where he. Uh, Try to poke a little bit with the Marines that he had in the bunkers. The Protoss player executing a uh, three gateway pressure and then was able to shield, well, to just trap the Marines with the force fields and the game ended right there. I actually think it was against Creator, but I'm not 100% sure. I just remember it being a TVP. But he struggles in this matchup. This is his weakest matchup. If you compare it to his Terran versus Zerg, for example, where he really excels, this is where he struggles the most. Yeah, you're exactly right. The Observer, by the way, just gets its first clamps of the first Command Center, and that, the position of it and the timing here pretty much lets him know that there are three Command Centers. He's not going to see that one and go, oh wow, I guess he just has his Command Center made. Meanwhile, a little bit of an attack here. Uh, he, he loses all of his brains and very little damage done here. Almost done. He just kills his out, it looks like. Well done by JYP. These force fields were perfect to trap the Marines, and he takes down a huge chunk of the forces of Maru. The supply is still even, and we have the double upgrades coming now up for the Terran player. Whereas, on the other hand, JYP with extended thermal lands is adding additional gateways. He's adding quite a lot here, adding uh, three additional ones will put his gateway count up to six. And he's already in possession of, well, he will be in possession of his first Colossus in just a few seconds. Yeah, it's popping out right now, and he saw everything. He saw the timing of the starport. He sees the first medevacs being made right now. With his Observer, he also saw that Stim accomplishes on the way. Another critical thing uh, that he was able to spot is the engineering base. He knows the EVAs are working. He knows he doesn't have upgrades either. So adding these gateways means he wants to put pressure on because he knows that JYP has committed a lot of resources yep. into tech, but not so much into production. At this point, if JYP wanted to go for an expansion, this is roughly the timing when you want to get your third Nexus up for roughly 11 to 12 minutes. But now he's uh, just gearing up, preparing for an attack. He has so many gateways now that he has as a fallback, and his uh, extended term lance is going to finish roughly when the second Colossus pops out. And this is this one timing that he can use as a Protoss player that is really dangerous to a Terran that's not prepared. And Maru does, because of his economy, not really have this high tech. He just had to start for a few seconds, so he doesn't really have a lot of medivacs and he doesn't have any Vikings at all. Nice force fields here by JYP, trapping a few units, and Maru has to be really careful now. Yeah, he stemmed a lot of his units there as well. The second Colossus being out with range is so scary. All the gates are done. So now he has a total of seven in his main base. That's so much potential pressure that he can put on with this. Ah, nice. Maru actually trying to go for a run by and he forces JYP back. At the same time, Maru is preparing for Vikings. The Stalkers are in position though. Oh, Maru has to be careful here. Sees it. Right, he sees it. Now that the units have been unloaded, he may actually just find himself trapped here. But he's buying the time he needs. Notice he also lifted his third command center out of his third base. He was like, no way can I hold that against yeah. this many Colossi. I can just continue to sit in my main base, drop my mules. I don't actually have to fight here. He doesn't have a third nexus. A great reaction. Many Terran players have actually tried to keep that command center up the whole time. You can see that Maru tries to play uh, sing, uh, things safe here. He does not go for any kind of 
risky play with the third base, as you already mentioned. He puts it back into the main base, and JYP, of course, is moving out once again. He wants to be aggressive now. He wants to take down this third that he st uh, thinks still exists. But the upgrades are going to work in Maru's favor. He's going for plus two, plus two already, and this will affect uh, the Protoss. And of course, we also have a lot of Vikings by now. Four in total, two additional ones. Now, right now, the army supply is still in JYP's favor. Can he actually get up the ramp and use it, though? There are a lot of bunkers in place already. Picks off an SCV. He's going to try to force the command center to lift. He just wants to put on a heavy amount of pressure. This is so hard for him to engage, though. Even with the Colossi with range, there's so many Vikings, he loses several Stalkers there. But JYP, this is really risky right now. The command center has to be lifted. Another Colossus is going to join the army very soon. But as you already said, Time is working a little bit in Maru's flavor. He's just getting in this perfect composition that he needs, and he's getting plus two, plus two. He's pulling those Colossi back. He cannot afford to lose them like this. That was a close call, yeah. only taking shield damage there. Nice positioning by Maru, though. I really like it. He's putting pressure on those Colossi, and JYP knows that if he loses this unit, it's going to be uh, very tough to beat the Terran player, if not impossible. Now, finally, the Double Forge and the expansion for JYP, as he realizes that it's taking too much of a risk to push through here. There's so many bunkers. There's the cliff mechanic that works in favor of Maru with the Vikings. He can't really engage into this bottleneck position. Falling back and taking the third base is his only option. Yeah, he, he, you're so right. He can't engage that location. The upgrades, though, there's going to be a timing window here where Maru will actually have way more uh, army spikes. He's got that. He had those extra minerals. He also will have 2 2 upgrades while his opponent is trying to get that blink out. Oh, this is just such a scary position for him right now. Wolf, if Maru waits now for plus two, plus two, and then hits a decent yeah. jump, he will be two upgrades ahead of his opponent. Catches a Stalker here. He may not even wait. He's got plus two attack right now, though. And Armor will follow in just a few seconds. He's got a bunch of SCVs to buffer as well. This may be Force curtains fields. for JYP. He uh, needs them. Crucial here, but he gets up the ramp without a problem at all. And this doesn't bode well for JYP. Now, the Colossi are being now targeted. He did get a lot of good shots off, though. The Photon Cannon goes down. The Warpins here are really helpful. Maru may have too much if he lands the Vikings here. Yeah, and these upgrades are really working for Maru. JYP so is forcing him back. This is such a close battle, but there are so many Marauders still alive. And with the Medivax that he has, he can heal them. The third phase is going to die, and JYP just lost his high-tech units. The reinforcements already running in. Maru, it looks like he was able to pull it off. He killed so many units already, and JYP is now in trouble. Only 45 army supply against 67 for Maru. Plus, he can move his command center down at any moment, whenever he feels safe. I don't think he's worried about that, though. I think he just wants to end the game. The Vikings, not yet with plus one, but they are doing some damage to this Colossus. The ground army alone will actually trade so decently against JYP, and I think JYP actually she has to GG here. Plus one, plus one is done for JYP, but it seems like it's gonna be too late. Maru is destroying his economy. The third already gone, the natural under pressure. And I guess that the Prime player is not gonna lose this game. He will definitely push his way into the main base of EG JYP, who's down to 30 supply. GG. And that is how Maru takes you apart. If you let him sit in his base and get those upgrades out, Maru takes risks, he tricks his opponent, and thinking he's playing aggressive, he's known for that, but if he stays in the base, I mean basically Maru took every risk, but then pressured his opponent enough to buy the time he needed. Exactly, he tried to run by, forced JYP back, the two, uh, two Colossus timing was not as good as it you know, usually would have been, it was really well executed, bought himself enough time to get Vikings into the game, and then defended really well. He already had the bunkers in position, he always dared JYP to attack him, to lose these units, but with a high ground advantage, that he had to shield his Vikings from the Stalkers. He had a great position, and JYP realized, I can't attack you here. I have to fall back. I have to take this third. And by then, the upgrades were done for Maru. He had plus two, plus two against not a single upgrade for JYP. Really well executed. Yep. And the next map is going to be Entomb Valley. Coming up here, Maru looking good. Playing the mind games. I, I loved how he handled this. JYP, on the other hand, he knew he needed a pressure. He couldn't find the proper angle, then he found himself trying to poke at the depots, he tried to get the command center on the edge, but he just didn't do enough damage, the upgrades kicked in. What and a great game by Maru, just so technical, really. And just look at him, he's looking once again like this like this little kid that couldn't care less what's happening. Yeah, I know, I love the attitude, man, he's just in the booth like, 
All right, I got my wrist protectors on. I'm gonna take this guy out. I belong in Code S, and I'm gonna take it. Nerves of steel. JYP is now under pressure. Yes, Maru has struggled against Brodos in the past, but now he's in the lead with a 1-0 against the evil genius. Map number two, as mentioned by Wolf, is going to be in Tomb Valley. This is JYP's chance to tie the score and force game number three. Everything's on the line here for him, and he wants to get into Chaos. Will he be able to pull it off, though? Maru is trying to get back into the Stalker 2 Premier League 2, and the game is going to start in just a few seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the GSL Code A Maru Prime against EG JYP.